Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Carolina Cast. And as we promised yesterday, we are going to be starting our podcast series is now from now until pretty much the end of the football season. And to kick it off, we got a little bit of a college basketball uh, podcast session. We're going to probably try and do these every Sunday or Monday uh, for the rest of the CBB season. And we got our first special guest of this uh, of this series, Avi Chapman. Welcome. A uh, good friend of mine from SBC Chicago camp, and he's a big, big Virginia fan for college basketball. Got a couple other teams, too, but it should be a fun one. So, and then obviously, you know, Chris, and then me as well. So, it's exciting to see all of you guys here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And make sure if you're tuning in right now, make sure you hit the subscribe button. The Carolina cast is on the road to 2,000 subscribers. I believe just moments ago, we reached 1,230 subscribers. So we are climbing up there. Thank you all so much. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And Marcus, you can go and take this one away. Yeah. All right. Let, let's get right into the thing. So big week of college basketball. Obviously, the AP pool came out today. Uh, the, first ga- the first thing we're going to do is... I'm going to say, give me your three surprise teams of the week. Of I'll, the week. I'll get us started here. Um, All right, you can start us off, Avi. One of my surprise, surprise teams of this week is the Cincinnati Bearcats to upset, to upset Iowa State. Cincinnati has been played t- has played some of the top teams in the country really tough. They, lost, they, they just played Houston. They only lost. Lost by five points at home. They're a really competitive team. They have a lot of different scores. They have a lot of different options they can go to there. So I think they can give give Iowa State some trouble at their home court. I like that. Uh, who, who? What other teams? What other two teams would you say? Um, I I think um, Auburn is also maybe not a surprise team, but a team that I think can win both of their games this weekend against some tough competition that they have. Um, they're a really feisty team. They know how to win. I just I just think they can beat Kentucky at home. And they also they also have another one against South Carolina, who's a really good team. I Auburn, I think Auburn can pick up two big wins in the SEC this week. All right. And then uh uh, Chris, you could go with your two teams next, and then I'll go with my two teams, and then we'll all wrap it up with one more team. Yeah, so really for my uh, surprise teams of the week, this is going to get posted um, on Tuesday, February 13th. Both of my games are actually for tomorrow's slate, and one is actually the first uh, game that we'll have at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. I think Butler stands a chance against number four Marquette, and hear me out. They got to go on the road to play a very uh, solid Butler team. They've had their ups and downs this season. They've lo- they've lost some very interesting games. They lost to Seton Hall. They lost to Xavier. But we have to remember they they've already beaten Marquette on the road. They went into Marquette's house and beat this team by seven. They gave up a they they gave a good fight against UConn, only losing by seven. And they once again had some back and forth games. They had to go on the road to play UConn, as so they're the number one team right now. Only lost by nine points. I'm pretty confident in Butler pulling off an upset against Marquette and, and sweeping them basically this season. And for my second game, I think Ole Miss uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern tomorrow at on the road against Kentucky. I think they can give the Wildcats a run for their money. Ole Miss is currently eighth in the SEC. They only have five losses on the season. They are on back-to-back loss to two top 25 teams in the country, but and they haven't had to face a – a team like Kentucky, you could say, other than Auburn and South Carolina, it's even Tennessee, too. They got obliterated by Tennessee. But you take out those games, they've been a very consistent team. They've beaten solid programs like Memphis. They've, um, like Florida, there, there's some solid teams that they've beaten Texas A&M, Arkansas, most of the SEC, they've already gotten out of the way. They're going to have their tougher opponents come up in this slate and in this month. And I think there's a good opportunity that they can go on the road and give Kentucky a run for their money. Yeah, I respect that for sure. Uh, for my two surprise teams, I'm actually going to go the polar opposite of what Chris said. I'm going to say, I mean, I get they're the number four ranked team in the country, 
but I've always been a big guy, a big advocate of this team, even though I'm not a fan of them. I'm going to say Marquette goes undefeated this week, 2-0. and They pick up the win against Butler. I know they lost them earlier in the season at home. I think they're looking for revenge. They're going to beat Butler in, their, at, in, in Indiana. But I'm also going to say that Marquette goes out on Saturday and they uh, – they pull off the win at in Connecticut against the UConn Huskies. So two road games for Marquette. I mean, that's like a guaranteed at least you got to lose one of those, especially against the number one ranked team in the country. No, I'm actually going to pick Marquette to win both of those games. And I'm going to say they get extremely serious consideration, personally, in my opinion, uh, if they do go on and do this. I'm going to put out in the next edit. By the way, I make edits every Monday for the top five teams. I made one earlier today. Go check that out. Uh, today as in Monday because this is pre-recorded. But I'm going to say Marquette goes on, wins both of those games, and they get serious consideration, in my personal opinion, become the number one ranked team in the country. And then uh, to finish it off, I'm going to actually say another bold take. I'm going to say Oklahoma goes out there, not goes undefeated, but, I mean, they're facing the two probably biggest powerhouses of – in the, of the Big 12 in recent memory. I mean, I know Houston's great this year, but this is their first year in the Big 12. I'm saying, like, good old Big 12 basketball, Baylor and Kansas. Those two teams faced off uh, two days ago. Uh, Kansas was able to pull it off in a close one where Baylor trailed back. But I'm going to say Oklahoma picks up a win at least against Baylor or Kansas. I'm probably more favoring that Kansas game because I think Kansas is going to come off a nice nice little win against Texas Tech tomorrow not, or tonight. And I'm going to say Bay- Baylor or Monday night, I should say. I'm going to say they probably get the win against Kansas because Baylor's at, uh, in, in Texas. But I'm going to go with Oklahoma to win at least one of those games and jump up a little bit in the AP poll. And then uh, I'll hit I'll hit you guys with my last one, too. Uh, I mean, I haven't really started looking into this team until recently. I'm actually going to go ahead and say that Iowa State uh, some finds their way to get inside maybe the top 10 this week, pending some losses. Uh, they'll play Cincinnati and Texas Tech, two unranked teams. But, you know, the Big 12, probably the best conference in college basketball. I know Avi said that Cincinnati goes out and upsets Iowa State. I disagree with that. I think Iowa State gets two wins. Uh, and I'm going to say they jump up, pending on how, how other teams in the top 10 fare. So, Avi and Chris, you guys can hit them with your uh, last, last uh, surprise teams of the week. I have, a, I don't know if they can go and beat this team outright, but I think Syracuse can put up a fight against UNC. G- they have a great guard combo in Judah Mintz and J.J. Starling. They're, Judah Mintz is a very elite scorer, a great driver. He's having a bit of a down year on his th- shooting the three. I just... I think they can go out there and put up a fight. I don't know if they can win outright, but I think that could be a very interesting game to to look at. For sure. Yeah, I I can see that one for sure. My my third one is actually going to be on a late Wednesday night game. I have Arkansas. They're hosting the number eight team in the country in the Tennessee Volunteers. And as being a Duke fan, I can clearly say yes. Arkansas is having a down year. They are 12 and 11. This has not been the season they're looking for, especially after beating Kansas in the NCAA tournament last season, having such a great run. I mean, you look at Arkansas this year, it's such a terrible down year. But going in to play Arkansas on the road, that is an incredible environment and an incredible atmosphere that they bring when they have to play their top and marquee opponents. And they showed that against Duke. And that's why they beat us by five points when we had to travel there a couple months ago. And I just don't know if Tennessee can go into an environment like Arkansas. Yes, Tennessee has had to play in big environments so far this season. Had to go on the road to play Wisconsin. They had to go on the road um, to play Kentucky. And they won that game by 10. That was the same uh, Saturday as Duke and Carolina. So they've had some of these big games, but th- I feel like this is a trap game. Arkansas is a big trap game, and they've been that for, they've been victims to several top teams in the country this season that they've been able to defeat because when they have to go play them at Arkansas, the atmosphere, the fans are there, everything is on their side, and Arkansas can use uh, as an advantage, and I think that's going to be a very marquee thing to see in that game on Wednesday night. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going to add on to that, actually. I mean, you know, including Eric, one of Eric Musselman's probably worst years with Ar- with uh, Arkansas. I mean, to take it in factor, though, in at Little Rock, they're still 9-4 and four this year. So, I mean, they're still a scary team at home. And I actually do like that prediction. I mean, my Georgia Bulldogs, obviously nowhere near to the competition of uh, Tennessee. But I'm going to – like, they put up a fight against Arkansas – uh, last Saturday, but I mean, Arkansas was able to pull out the win. Uh, they had the lead for most of the game. I'm going to say Eric Musselman's squad gets it done in front of the home crowd, actually, too, uh, against Tennessee. And I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not going to bank on that for sure yet, but I'm going to say that can for sure happen. Like, I see a wide possibility of that potentially happening, especially with Tennessee losing that big game to Texas A&M on Saturday as well. Yeah, that's that's well, that's kind of what concerns me going into this game against Arkansas because they, they just they looked completely offbeat, off this, all that. There was just miscommunication here and there. None of their big guys could get going for the Volunteers in that game, and you see that from, I mean, this type of loss on the road against a team like Texas A and M. Uh, you give up 27 points to Radford, shooting nine for 17. They got outbeaten by field goals, a three point line. To, um, they had less turnovers, and Tennessee has been really good with their turnovers this season, as we could say. They were out-rebounded, which is something you don't see at a top team. So that, that was really just a down game for the Volunteers, and I don't know how much I can trust them to bounce back from that when you have to go play a trap game like Arkansas. I think there's a good chance that they get their things going once they have to come back home and host Vanderbilt. That is on uh, February 17th. That's later this week. But I, I think that Arkansas game is a major trap game, and – that is something to keep an eye out for. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Arkansas, there's a lot of trap games this week. I mean, there's not, there are some very good games, but there's not many powerhouse ranked games uh, this week uh, as as the two previous slates have offered. So, Avi, any other insight before we hit the commercial break and then head to our next segment? If, uh, I do have one. Uh, as a Virginia fan, I hate to say this, but – Tomorrow night, I think Pitt could give Virginia a big run for their money. Pitt is a, a very scary team. They went into they went into Cameron and beat Duke. They've yeah. they put up a fight against UNC. They have some bad losses on that resume, but they also have some very good wins. You, you even though UVA is great on their home court, they've won twenty two straight. Um, I I just think Pitt can give Pitt's just a very very scrappy team, and I don't. And they've given Virginia some trouble before in the past, so I think I think Pitt can go into JPJ and maybe give Virginia a run for their money. Yeah, I think that could be a really good defensive game for this week. You know, Virginia, the second best ranked defense in the country, and then Pitt, like you said, a scrappy team. Like they'll they'll play with all their vengeance, all their anger out. They wanna they wanna snap that streak at JPJ. But uh, w- when we come back, we'll be covering. Uh, the biggest games of the week, especially including the one I gave my bold take on between UConn and Marquette. But we'll be back soon. You're watching uh, the recording of the podcast on the Carolina Cast, first ever episode for college basketball. back uh so as a reminder road to 2000 subs smash that subscribe button and then now let's head into the game of the week or game of the weeks i should say um i'm gonna go with the very first one here uh i'm not gonna get my take 
But I think the first one that we have to mention is tomorrow, two ranked teams. By the way, Duke-Wake Forest looking like a solid ending where we might have Andrew Carr, though, just fouled out. He's had 12 points, been a pretty impactful player tonight. But I'm going to say Oklahoma-Baylor, that should be an interesting game. Oklahoma, newly ranked team, uh, going going to Baylor, uh, playing them uh, on their own home court. So that should be a fun one at the at the Pavilion. Uh in Waco, Texas. Uh, Avi, you got it. Or Avi and Chris, you guys can go first. Who Who do you think is going to win that game? Um, I'll go ahead and start us off for it. So actually, I'm looking at this schedule right now for Oklahoma, at least. Um, not only do they play Baylor, they have another marquee game on Saturday that we'll yeah, get to in just a moment. We'll get but, to that um, soon. Yeah, we're going into this Baylor game. I, I, see, I see resistance that needs to be shown by the Baylor Bears. They need to protect their home court. And after, I mean, Oklahoma has just been on a somewhat tear, you can say. Um, I, I get why they are in the rankings. They had a massive win against BYU. They are able to close things out against Oklahoma State. But you can also see some interesting losses. They almost beat Texas Tech, lost by one of them. They blew out Kansas. It's just very inconsistent from what mm-hmm. we can, we've seen. We, they lost to UCF by double digits. And then you look at Baylor, they lose in triple overtime to TCU. They go on a three-game winning streak until losing by three to Kansas. That Kansas game was incredible, though. It came down to the last shot, mm-hmm. which was unfortunately missed to um, extend the game and go to overtime. So I'm, I don't really take that Kansas loss to heart if I'm Baylor. That, that was a great opportunity to go um, and play Kansas on the road in one of yeah. the biggest like marquee stadiums in all of college basketball just for its atmosphere and its history. So – um, great effort by Baylor in that game. But if you go into a game like this, it's going to matter on who can step up for the Bears. And, and if you look at who stepped up for the Bears against Candace, that was Yves Missy. As he, he's been averaging 11 points per game this season, uh, almost six rebounds. Um, he's a freshman from Cameroon. He Actually, I, I really got to know him in the Duke game that was in Madison Square Garden this December. And uh, that was actually a fun fact. The first time his family ever came out to see him play for Baylor because they live in Africa. And this this guy is a unstoppable monster. This guy was incredible these last few weeks. He did have a gown game against uh, Iowa State. He only had six points in that game. But in that lo- in that triple overtime loss, he had 25 points and nine rebounds. Against Kansas, he was really their only effort. He had 21 points and eight rebounds. And I think the difference maker in this game is going to be Missy. If he can get rebounds, if he can get points for the Bears, then I don't know how Oklahoma can keep up with them. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because, you know, Oklahoma's had a solid defense all year. They don't have, like, the greatest offense of all sorts, but a defense has been very solid for them. Uh, I think the main key is how Baylor can respond to that because, I mean, they and against a great defensive team against Kansas, only ended up scoring 61 points, but sh- – put up a better fight in Allen Fieldhouse, unlike Houston, which I think is a big look at uh, because uh, Baylor has played at Allen Fieldhouse a plethora more amount of times than uh, Houston has. Uh, but mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot, a lot of tension for Houston in the next coming years, but they'll adjust to it soon. But for me personally, I'm going to go with Baylor as well, mainly because it's in Waco. Uh, uh, I don't, I mean, Oklahoma's newly ranked. I'm riding with them. I like them, but. I'm, I'm not going to say that they're going to win this one, but keep keep ahead for my predictions on them later. Avi, what do you have? I have, I have Baylor. I, I just oh, – if you look at some of Oklahoma's games, other than that Kansas State game on the road, they've struggled a little bit. They've won, but, they, but they've been close games against some not-so-good teams. As you mentioned, they lost to UCF on the road, who has been, who has been Kansas. They, they're good at home. But UCF is just not that great. They're okay, but they're not great. I I just think Oklahoma is not gonna be able to go into Waco and beat them because Baylor's a hostile environment. They have a good team. They have a big force inside. They have a Garden Jacoby Walter who can shoot the lights out of the ball. So I think it. I think Baylor's just gonna have too much for them. But it should be a very good game. Yeah. By the way, uh, the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, pull off the win against Wake Forest. Now Kansas mm-hmm. Texas Tech, the marquee game of the night. Texas Tech's got the early lead though. But either way, so those are our predictions on uh, Oklahoma Baylor. Uh, next, we're gonna cover two of these teams' same games. 
first we'll go with South Carolina and Auburn and then give me your Kentucky Auburn prediction after that. South Carolina Auburn will be uh be Wednesday. Uh it'll be in Auburn, it'll be at the Neville Arena and then uh on uh Saturday Auburn is Auburn is uh going to stay again at the Neville Arena. So two home games for the Auburn Tigers this week. So Avi, we'll go back to you right away actually. So do you think Auburn's able to pull off the sweep at home against two top-ranked teams in the SEC? I, I've, I've seen some of South Carolina's games, and I've been very impressed. They have, they have, they have, they can go way deep in their bench. They can go ten deep. They have guards in Nietzsche Johnson. They have a big force inside BJ Mack. I, I just, I think South Carolina can go on the road and beat Auburn. My only concern there is that I don't know if South Carolina can go into that that's very very hostile environment in Auburn if South Carolina can get through that they can win that game I just think South Carolina is a better team they've they've been a big surprise this year I just think they have too much scoring on their team for Auburn even though Auburn's defense is very good South Carolina has one of the best offenses in the country yeah, for sure. I mean, the South Carolina offense has been amazing, but you know that Auburn defense great too. Um, I'm gonna go. Mm, this is a really, really tough one for me to pick. I think it's tougher to pick than Auburn, Kentucky. Uh, I think I gotta go. Mm. I'm actually gonna ride with South Carolina. You know, Auburn's coming off a loss against Florida. Uh, in Gainesville, I think that's going to affect them. I mean, I know it's hard to win in Gainesville uh, at either in either sport of football, basketball, or baseball, but I'm going to say Auburn uh, p- does not pull off the win. South Carolina is able to get the road win, and they're going to they're going to stay at just at three losses and able to put ahead at 22 wins. I mean, what we've seen so far from the college basketball season is that the teams producing big wins and a lot of wins are teams with just fantastic offenses. I mean, you look at the top five teams, Marquette, UConn, Purdue, Houston, Kansas, great offenses, great versatile teams. I mean, obviously South Carolina's not there yet, but I mean, they play in a pretty respectable conference in the SC in the Southern Eastern conference. But, uh, I mean, I think South Carolina is going to be able to get it done uh, at Neville Arena. And then uh, I'm I'm going to go pretty quick. I'm going to say Auburn actually picks up the win again. I don't I just don't think they can go over two at home uh, against and the Whitby Kentucky, which is the college game day of the week, uh, mainly because I mean Kentucky's just on a downfall since I mean they they've really plummeted since that Tennessee game. Their rankings have dropped. They've been losing games. It's not been looking good for the Wildcats. And, I mean, again, Calipari's coaching a one team. I know he's Mr. One and Done, but it's a young team that he's coaching there. So, Avi, who do you have for Auburn, Kentucky? And then, Chris, we'll go to your predictions for both of those games. I have Auburn. Kentucky's defense is one of the worst in the Power Five Power Five conferences. It's, it's, they, they, they've given up over, like, 80 points in – their last couple of games, they their offense is really good, but it's hard to win games when you're giving up 90 points to teams that aren't known for their offense and more known for their defense. Like they just they just gave up like 89 points to Gonzaga the other day, who's mm-hmm. not who's not the Gonzaga they usually are every year. I just don't think that defense is. It, I just don't think that defense can stick with that Auburn offense. And also, Auburn's defense is really good. So, I just don't think Kentucky is going to have enough to go on the road and beat Auburn. Yeah, for sure. All right. Chris, who do you got for both of the Auburn games this week? I think, man, it's it's really crazy. I think – the South Carolina game, this game on Wednesday night, I think this is going to be a harder matchup for Auburn than the Kentucky game, which kind of gives it away that I think Auburn's going to mm-hmm. win that Saturday game. I'll get to that in just a moment. I'll start with the South Carolina game, though. You go into this game, uh, you can look at statistics, and you can go off that and just say, like, okay, Auburn averaging 82.3 points per game, South Carolina 72.6. You can look at this and that. Auburn's been out-rebounding them all season. I think a key is also looking at the last five games. South Carolina has just been on fire, and they they have caught fire. But I will say this. 
South Carolina, Marcus, I don't know about you. I think South Carolina has caught fire just a little bit too early from the liking that you would like if you're about to hit the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying catching yeah, fire is bad. The one thing is, though, yeah. catching fire right now can put them at a huge, huge lead uh, for, for winning yeah. the SEC in conference play, depending on how Bama does. Yeah, but that that's my worry. That 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 is my worry because if they, they can get that lead – and then after just you know flying through everybody, these I mean, I mean there, there there's an eventual point that they're gonna lose a game, and 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 my this is at least my thought process. If you want to lose a game, you want to lose one right now. You want to yeah. learn from one right now before you go into the tournament. I think that's what happened to Purdue For last sure. season. Who is knows? Purdue, yeah, they could get they could yeah. get they could get Friday in the SEC tournament. And I mean, even in the NCAA tournament, because that's—I mean—that's obviously where they're going to go right now. We don't yeah. know where the ranking will be, but they're—they're they're heading there too. They're heading to the Big Dance for sure. So I think you want to go ahead and get a loss out of the way. I'm not saying obviously don't try. I'm just saying if there's a game South Carolina would want to lose right now, I think it's to a very experienced Auburn team. I think it's to an Auburn team that can put up good fights, and they've also been a little inconsistent. We saw the victories against Ole Miss and Alabama, and then. We saw them just get destroyed by Florida on the road. On the road, so like we we've seen the inconsistency. This is what happens in conference play, and Auburn has been leaning on their home games this season. And I just I cannot take their chances away from playing great at home. And then going in that Kentucky game, I agree. I think Kentucky's on another downfall. I think this is another one and done. Now I wouldn't say maybe not first round. I think maybe their ceiling is the Sweet Sixteen, but that that's their ceiling. I don't know if they're going to even get there. Uh, I just don't – I don't have a lot of hopes for this Kentucky team, and it's unfortunate because this is, once again, another team where you go into the regular season thinking Kentucky could do something this year, and they I mean, just – Yeah, but it's a super young and inexperienced team at the same time with mm -hmm. the likes of, like, guys like uh, Shepard, uh, Viscus, and, like, Wagner. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it is a very inexperienced team. I think I think Auburn just has the talent. And they, they have the I mean they have the the core. So like I think I think Auburn's got everything going for them going into this matchup. And I, I don't want to go against them playing at home. All right. Okay. So I think we can hit, skip ahead Thursday, Friday, uh, and obviously the biggest day of the college basketball season and the biggest day of college sports for football and basketball, Saturday, baby. And that that's where some big games are being played. Uh, I think we're going to review two games here, or uh, two games because we already got into Kentucky Auburn. Uh, I'm going to save the best one for last. Let's go Kansas Oklahoma. What do you guys think about that one? Uh, Chris, you could start, or Avi, you could start this one off. Um, it's very tough to beat Kansas. I mean, the te Texas Tech is up all is beating them right now, but that's at their home court. It's uh, – Oklahoma, like I said before, they struggle on the road. They beat – other than that Kansas State game, they've played some very mediocre teams close at, at their home – at away. I, I just think – I just think Oklahoma can go – I think I just think Oklahoma is not gonna have enough to beat Kansas. Kansas is has KJ Adams, who's a great defender. They have Hunter Dickinson, who's arguably the best big man in the country. They have a really good shooter in Kevin McCuller, who's one of the most improved players this year. I just don't think Oklahoma has enough on their team to beat Kansas. Yeah, I do agree with that. Uh, I'm. I mean, this is. I mean, I agree with that take, but at the same time, I did say Oklahoma would go one at one, and I said they would beat. Uh, I said they would lose to Baylor. So obviously, I'm, I'm picking them to win this Kansas game. I mean, like Oklahoma's a tricky team; they've been inconsistent, but you know that inconsistency can lie either way. It could go very positive or it could go very negative. And you know, Kansas has had their fair share of ups and downs. Obviously, it's a Bill Seth self coach team. It's it's the Kansas Jayhawks for crying out loud. But I am going to actually say that Oklahoma pulls off the win and Kansas gets upset for the second week in a row. 
I think this Oklahoma team's talented. Like I said, this defense is good. So I think it's going to be another good defensive matchup. Uh, I'm going to, I love the, I love the matchup uh, between the uh, Oklahoma between, uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure if he'll be guarding Dickinson, but the Oklahoma uh, big man in uh, J- in uh, Jalen uh, Moore, or yeah, Jalen Moore could I couldn't perhaps get the E and O. Either way, I'm gonna love that. I, I like that matchup between him and Dickinson if that happens. And then I, I mean, I think Oklahoma is just gonna put a show on in front of their home crowd. And I mean, they're projected to win this game right now in the matchup predictor. And you look, Kansas is trying to come back right now against Texas Tech. So, and then Chris, give your insight on that, and then we'll jump right back to you for the big game of the week. Yeah, I'm. I, I think this is. I I think this is a no brainer in my opinion. I I can get the talk about Oklahoma. I I see the inconsistency, and I'm never the person to go off of inconsistency. But you just look at a team in Kansas that is so experienced, has so many players here and there, and. This is a team that, yes, they do have their ups and downs. They're going to win game, big games. They're going to lose big, uh, big games. The, I mean, Kansas has always been like Duke in recent history. They, they lose very questionable games, and they win very good games. And I think Kansas is going to show that right here. I think they're going to win this game. I know Oklahoma can be shown as a type of – I think Oklahoma gives a good fight. I'll say that. I think Oklahoma can keep this a close game. I don't think it's going to be a double-digit win for Kansas. I don't think it's going to be an easy win for Kansas. It's still a road game at the end of the day. But I think I think Oklahoma can they can hang around a little bit. But Kansas having more of the experience, having more of the talent, and having the better coach is going to be the difference maker. All right, all right. Uh, I'll save mine for last because I'll be also the last person staying on the stream. Chris, we'll go right back to you. Biggest game of the week, in my personal opinion, I think everyone else's opinion. Big East matchup for the ages. UConn versus Marquette. Who do you got, Chris Verma? Man, I am I'm I'm torn because listen, the fact that they have to go on the road, I think, to play this, that, that, that is oh, I want to give Marquette a chance right here, but this UConn team is just so good, man. I mean, you look, you have Tristan Newton. I mean, you've got Cam Spencer on this team. They have so many weapons that they can use on offense. They're still a very good defensive team. I know you, if you want to look at the team stats and points per game, UConn only averages three more points per game. They, they also out-rebound, and the winning streaks are massive for both teams. They've been running the Big East. And I think Marquette, this won't be the last time we hear Marquette's name in a big game. And I, I think they have an opportunity to make a run come madness. But I just I don't see UConn losing this game. This is going to be an incredible game to tune in and watch. But I think I, once again I think Marquette's going to keep it close. I think we'll have a solid matchup. I don't think it'll be as good as Kansas Oklahoma though. I think Kansas Oklahoma will be the better game. This is more of the bigger headline just because it's two top four teams. I still have UConn getting the job done and winning. Mm, I disagree. I think it's going to be a better game than Kansas Oklahoma. But either way, Avi, we'll head to your prediction first, and then we'll we'll get my prediction. <laughs> I, I'm gonna pick UConn to beat Marquette. Uh, the thing in, with UConn is that they've just have too much talent. <laughs> they just have too much talent for Marquette to handle. Even though Marquette's a really good team, they have one of the best guards in the country in Tyler Kolak. UConn has one of the best big men in the country, one of the best guards in the country and one of the best forwards in the country. They have Cam Spencer, Tristan Noon, Donovan Kling. They have a bunch of just good, talented players. It, it, they've, It's just too much for Marquette to handle, even though I do think this is going to be a good game. Um, it's also at UConn, which is a very tough place to play. I just don't think Marquette's going to have enough firepower to beat UConn at UConn. I, it's good. It's going to be a good game. Now. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have waited over a week for this, for an absolute Marcus Trevetti scream fest. I'm picking the Marquette Golden Eagles. Let's go. Tyler Kolick and Oso Igahardo. I love that duo. I love Marquette. You're never going to see me pick against Marquette. Go watch me. Go watch mm-hmm. me pick my Marquette selection show. That I have them true. winning the whole dang thing, I believe. 
Oh my did. God, I love this Marquette team. I don't care that it's at Hartford, Connecticut. I don't care that it's at the XL Center. I don't care. I don't care how good UConn is. I don't care that they're the reigning champions. I don't care that they have the better head coach. Give me Marquette. I'm I, I'm looking for a good game. I just don't think Marquette is going to bring the firepower to make it a good game. I'm not saying it's going to be a double digit win. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised UConn wins this game by six seven points. We'll have to, we'll have to see how it plays out though. I mean I can agree with that, but I, I'm going full ride Marquette this week. All, All right. right. Lastly, rapid fire top top ten. Uh, just right now, Chris, you go you start. <sighs> Okay, so, I mean, it's very obvious who the number one team in the country is. I mean, I, I have them winning on Saturday. So, uh, real quick, I'm just going to go ahead and go as fast as I want with it. And this may have some bias in it. Um, number one is going to be UConn. I mean, it's got to stay like that. I, I actually, I, you know what? I'm going to go with the top three that's in the AP top 25. I agree with that. I think it is right in that order with UConn, Purdue, and Houston. And then I think this is where it gets shaken up a little bit. Marcus knows I'm a massive Marquette hater. He knows that. So I'm going to have Arizona jumping Marquette at number four. And I'm going to have Marquette fought Caleb a lot. Love? I'm not going to go that crazy. I, I am taking Caleb Love this week. I'm not going to go that crazy on the Marquette hate. I'm going to have them at five. I think Kansas, Carolina stays put. I think Duke jumps Tennessee to get to eight. And then I think I – think, um, out of here to go to nine. I think South Carolina does get up to number nine, folks. I do still think Auburn wins that game, but I think South Carolina has earned the right to be in the top 10 just for how many wins and how far they've been on. And I think Tennessee rounds it out at number 10. That would be my personal top 10. All right. Avi, you go next. UConn won, obviously. I, like, like I've said before, they they just have too much talent at every single yeah. position. And it, it – they're probably going to win the national championship again this year, be right there to win it all. Um, then Purdue too. Um, then Houston, I like I'm going with the Chris's top three, the top three teams in the AP poll. And here's where it gets a bit interesting for me. I'm going to put Kansas four. They're going to jump Marquette. In Arizona, Arizona has not Respect. been that impressive to me. Can't I mean can't, Kansas is playing arguably the tough, toughest conference in basketball. Arizona is playing in one of the weakest, and they've been struggling and they've been ha having very close games here and there. Then I'm gonna have Marquette five. I mean they're a really good team. Tyler Kolek, <laughs> Tyler Kolek is <laughs> mostly their team. Then six. North Carolina, even though North Carolina has been struggling recently, they have a lot of talent on that team, arguably the best guard in the country and RJ Davis. He, he could, he should be, he should be in like top three in national player of the year. For seven, I, I mean, I've really li liked how, uh, South Carolina has been playing. I know that's a big jump, and they're tw they're twenty one three, but I think they they can be at seven. They've been very consistent. They've only lost three games all year. They've some of the best scoring in the country and some of the deepest bench in the country. That's and for eight Auburn. I think South Carolina and South Carolina versus Auburn. Is going to be a great game. Auburn has Johnny Broom, one of the best defenders and centers in the country. That's that's really it. And then nine, I have I have Duke. I mean, Duke's a really good team. They just picked up a good good win against a very good Wake Forest team tonight. Uh, they have Kyle Filipowski, Jeremy Roach. They're a, they have a lot of talent on that team. They. They're not. They don't have that deep of a bench, but they go like seven or eight deep. So that. So I, Duke's really good, and then for ten, I have Iowa State. Iowa State's deep. Iowa State's defense is one of the best in the country. They have. They have one of the best defend. Some of the best defenders in the country. I think Iowa State's a very good team, and I think they can make a deep run in the tournament. And that's my power rankings. All right. 
Uh, I'm going to go rapid fire here. Number one, I know I picked them to lose Saturday. UConn, there's no debate. Number two, I'm actually going to go with Houston. I'm not a big Purdue guy. Uh, I mean, I have them at number three, but I've never been a fan of Zach Eady. I mean, I respect the university. I've met the president mm-hmm. of Purdue. Very nice guy, Mitch Daniels, well, the former president. Uh, he retired last year, but uh, he's a great guy. I, love, I respect the university a lot. Just not a big Zach Eady guy, more of a Jaden Ivey guy. Always mm-hmm. have been. Yep. Uh, number number uh, four, I'm going to go with the Marquette Golden Eagles. I mean, there's no brainer that I'm not going to have them in the top four. They're my favorite team that I don't root for. Uh that I'm not a fan of. Number five, I'm going to go with Arizona. They're still a great team. They've had some struggle. They've had some uh, questionable losses, like like when they lost to FAU. But I mean, at the same time, like it's still Arizona. They're a great team. They've been a great team for a while now. So got to pick them at number five. Number six, Kansas. Number seven, uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk about Kansas. They're easily sixth. Uh, they have a, they're questionable to be top five. Uh, Number seven, this is where it gets interesting. I'm actually going to say Iowa State is number seven. I really like their defense, and I respect that university. I mean, they have some tough wins. Although they have some tough losses, lost some heartbreakers, they can be a team to look out for, like Avi said, in the tournament. And I think they will probably win the Big 12 tournament, maybe outside of Kansas. And then uh, number uh, number uh, eight, I'm going to go with uh, Tennessee. Or, I mean, not Tennessee, North Carolina. North Carolina, man, they got a huge win against Duke. I mean, they're still a good team. I'm not a huge advocate for North Carolina, but, I mean, we haven't seen enough to pr- say, like, oh, they're not good yet. Number uh, eight or, or number nine, I'm going to go with uh, uh, Duke. They've been they've been a great team. They're consistently a great team. Love John Shire, great head coach, Illinois guy. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, I like the team. Kyle Filipowski, my boy, number one overall pick. Chris, you know the joke. And then number 10, I'm going to go with South Carolina. I mean, you could say it's just SEC hate. They beat Georgia, broke my heart. That's what started the Georgia downfall, really. I mean, I know they lost a couple games before that. But, uh, I mean, South Carolina, productive offense. And they are a scary team, ladies and gentlemen. And in my personal opinion, the best team in uh, the in the Southern Eastern Conference. And Texas Tech, by the way. Uh, beating uh, Kansas 24-14 right now. Ooh. So that is pretty interesting, ladies and interesting gentlemen. Start, yeah. Yeah. So that'll do it. I mean, everybody, thank you for tuning in to the first college basketball uh, podcast episode. We're going to get a ton more of these out. And also, we'll be doing the national series, too, where we cover pretty much just national sports. And then we'll do Carolina sports. That'll be mainly covered by Chris and Sam. Uh, college basketball and national will be covered by Mark by me. Uh, expect to have Avi again sometime on the new f- in the near future. We're expecting Benson Schwapek, one of my other friends, to come on soon as well. You'll see Sam within the next week or so. So, and obviously you'll see Chris, the main man of the channel. But it's been a fun one. Thank you everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Carolina Cast. Mm-hmm.